Welcome to First Talk. I'm Tamara Bull. Calvin Helene is a lawyer who's just written a compelling book called Dances with Dependency. He takes an honest look at Aboriginal issues, but he doesn't stop there. He provides innovative solutions and then a vision which includes a productive Indigenous community within Canada. Calvin Helene has made a huge difference in the Native community. He started the Shudokan Aboriginal Karate Club as a way to assist low-income inner-city kids to have a healthier lifestyle. I'm from uh, Loch Lamps, Port Simpson, uh, which is about 30 kilometers north of Prince Rupert. My father is uh, Nis Naganus, the chief of the Gitlan tribe. Uh, my mother is uh, Soldach from the Gitlan Geek tribe. Um, I lived in the village until I was about 11, 12 years old. And my grandmother and father sent me away with the idea that I should get an education and try to help Aboriginal people move forward. Calvin found out through someone who had worked in the school that I had an after-school athletic program running. And so that person who had actually worked here for a while, his name is Scott Reese, he's a First Nations support worker. Um, he phoned me one day and he said, um, I'd like to introduce someone to you who's interested in starting a karate program. And I said, absolutely. He said to me, um, what I have to offer is free karate for the children. Karate for me uh, allowed me to accomplish things that I don't think I would have been able to without having some kind of way of developing discipline. And usually martial arts lessons can be quite expensive. And so we started offering them to Aboriginal kids originally and then we just opened it up to everybody in East Vancouver because money shouldn't be a barrier or, or ethnicity shouldn't be a barrier to, um, to having access to something. I think karate is very beneficial for uh, people, especially like youths, like in this part of the city, like there's not a lot of people that can actually afford to send their kids to karate class. So. Having free classes, I think it's very good for the kids and their self-confidence. Self and I just think that that is exactly the kind of role modeling that our children need. They need to see Aboriginal people who are in successful roles in life. They need to see Aboriginal role models who lead a really healthy life, which is what Calvin has to offer. And they also need to know that people care enough about them to give up of their free time and their family time and their business time to come and do this. I think there's a huge message there. Karate definitely plays a big role in my life. It's um, one of the main activities that I've stuck through, stuck through consistently with throughout my life, along with school, but it's been a pillar of strength, I guess you could say. At a certain level, everybody reaches the same physical conditioning and uh, what makes a difference beyond that is your, your, your mental attitude or your toughness. And that's what makes a difference between those that excel and those that just get along. And uh, hopefully that's what we'll teach the kids here. It's important to be able to, to take what we've learned and to try and give back to our own people. I mean, it's, it's really important. If we don't do it, who else will? Joining me now is Calvin Helene. That's so amazing that you have that program. How long have you had it? Uh, we've had that running now for four years, and we've had probably over 400 uh, students through the club. And um, it's been fairly gratifying. This year, uh, I will be raising money and we'll be bringing uh, the very highest Japanese masters back uh, over to Canada that haven't been here in 25 years. So the the kids will have an opportunity to um, meet these masters that actually very few people do, especially in North America. So it, it's, uh, it's been a great program and, and everybody's doing it because they uh, feel good about it and, and they love to do it. 
my God, what a great program. It's so amazing that you're giving back, but you're also... Um, also have a book, A Dances with Dependency, that you just wrote. Um, inside the book, I read this amazing story about uh, something that your grandmother said to you. So maybe you could tell us that story. Well, when I, I was sent away from my community when I was about 12 years old, mm -hmm. and uh, my grandmother and my father wanted me to become a soldier in, the, uh, in basically the, uh, the battle to make the lives of ordinary Aboriginal people better. And... Um, I got a little bit sidetracked uh, when I was younger in my career as a lawyer and started chasing money for money's sake. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think a lot of people go through that when they're young, though. You know, they get caught up. So, but you found your way back. I found my way back because um, I, I think I was doing things that I wasn't supposed to be doing. Uh, my raison d'être is to to do what I'm doing to try to help Aboriginal people out and. Uh, I had a dream one night, and a very powerful dream, and I don't dream very often, and it, uh, I believe, was my grandmother, mm. basically uh, uh, telling me to, to pull up my socks and get back on the road I'm supposed to be on. That's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. And so you did, and that, I guess, was a changing moment for you. And now along with the Karate Club, you do a lot of work, and then the book that you've just written, there's a lot of talk about the book. So maybe describe the book to us um, and, and the solutions that you provide. Yeah, the book is called Dances with Dependency, and, and the subtitle is Indigenous Success Through Self-Reliance. And what I, uh, I originally wrote the book as partially as an obligation to my family, mm -hmm. and partially uh, from my personal obligation to try to help Aboriginal people. And I think it's really the first book that's ever been written that looks at uh, the whole question of dependency and the dependency mindset and how that's become a barrier for Aboriginal people to move forward. Um, they've been, Aboriginal people have been socialized by a system they didn't create into thinking that somebody else is going to take care of their problems. And at the end of the day, uh, we should be fairly convinced uh, from the misery that the whole Indian Act system has created uh, by, about uh, the value of taking control of our own lives. And that really is the heart of the issue. We, we have to take ownership of the problem. We have to, it doesn't matter who caused it or, or any of that. We have to take ownership of the problem and we have to do something about it. And uh, the, there are solutions out there. And I think the great thing about this book is that there's so many solutions in the book to getting away from the dependency mindset and so many solutions and a real message of hope. And I think that that will resonate very well with a lot of people. How has the Native community responded to this book? Because it is, I guess, a sensitive issue for a lot of people. Yeah, I thought it would be uh, quite a sensitive issue, but uh, to the present... Uh, all I've seen is overwhelming support from Aboriginal people. Mm -hmm. um, I've really said the emperor has no clothes, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody in our community has thought this. They know about all the problems. They know, uh, and, and everybody feels the same way about it. They, they feel that um, this system is literally killing Aboriginal kids. It is, absolutely. And it's particularly cruel to Aboriginal children and women, and... Uh, uh, we need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And um, asking the government for more money is, uh, is not making a difference. If this system that we have uh, was making a difference, I would defend it. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the, the social pathologies and the statistics relating to Aboriginal people, well, we are the first peoples in Canada. Mm -hmm. We are probably the last peoples by every social and economic indicator. Uh, we have to do something about, about this. Absolutely. I completely feel the same way. I think it's such a great book. I would highly recommend people read it because I love the part that there's so many solutions in it and it turns the situation. And I think um, we're past the storm. And I think that's the message inside the book is we're past the storm. And it's time to start looking to the future. Coming up next, thank you for joining us. Coming up next, Murray Porter sings the blues. Thank you.